In this video, we'll pick back up with where we left off. So you may have closed out and saved your document into your Google Drive and your graphics folder. We're gonna open that now. So instead of clicking on new file, we already have a file that exists. We're gonna click open. We're gonna go into your Google Drive, just as we did last time, my drive, go to graphic design folder, go to lessons because it was a lesson, and then there we are, you should find your L1 Basics 1 with your last name on it. So I'm opening mine. And we're going to continue on from here. Um, again, just some flashbacks from the previous lesson. If you wish to have your toolbar be singular, you can click the double arrows and get a single shot. Or you can get the double arrows and hit the double. But I do want to make sure that when you, when you have your toolbox, you see the hand is separate as a tool from the Zoom tool. If you don't see that, you're gonna go under the Edit Toolbar to its little menu, and you wanna click Advanced, okay? We did that in the previous lesson, and it might still be set that way for you, but just in case it changed, I wanna make sure you had that. We looked at the Properties panel yesterday, how when we click on anything with the Selection tool, the properties for changing show up over here. And we worked with filling the inside of the object with a color, and then we chose an outline stroke color. We set how wide it was over here, but we then looked at the fact that it all shows up over here as well. We have the fill box, which is now on top. So if I, if I change anything about this, it will definitely change the inside. If I want to change the outside stroke, I have to click on the outside stroke, and it'll set that. But what if I don't want an outline stroke? I can click the little none box. And we have that same look over here. When we click on this, we have the none or no fill box right there. So I can click it in either place to take or remove the stroke off of the circle. Okay, so from here on out, we aren't going to have any shapes that we build that will have an outline stroke unless we tell it with either double clicking here to pick a color, or if we come over here and pick a color from this space. All right, so right now we're working with just a solid filled color uh, and a shape with no outline. All right, carrying on, here's some other good, good deals to know about. Um, we looked at properties and we looked at layers. Notice how when I click on one, the other one goes behind. Okay, this might be lovely for some people, um, but this kind of, when I need to get to layers quickly and I have to keep flipping back and forth between the tabs, I'm not a fan, but I want to let you know that you can grab the word or the tab itself and pull it out, and that way you can have both items open. It is totally an option. It's up to you if you want to have that, um, but I like keeping it open and close so I can keep working with it. If you don't want that to separate it anymore, you can grab the Layers tab and put it back up, and it's back with the other two. All right, so I'm going to drag mine out again briefly. All right, so remember the Hand tool helps us move our page around. I'm going to move over here so we can see this side of the page a little bit better. Um, we're going to do two more shapes that we didn't get to. We, we looked at the Rectangle tool, and you, you realize that the rectangle, we put it on its own layer. We can turn the eyeball off or on to see it. And we locked it so that we couldn't draw or do anything on that layer. All right, if it was selected, it won't let us do anything. All right, so it is locked in position. So we're gonna keep drawing on layer two because layer two is still visible. And I'm gonna add some more stuff. We're gonna go back to our toolbox and we're gonna click on the polygon tool. So this gives you a multi-sided tool. Um, one of the interesting things about this is, notice I haven't let go of the mouse yet um, until now. I can actually change the side number right here, this little guy right here, this little bitty anchor point, when you hover over it, it gives you a plus minus. I can minus this, that's what a polygon should look like. I was messing with it earlier. Or you could take the size 
of the sides up or all the way down to a triangle. So you have the capability, once you've drawn the polygon tool, to adapt it. The other thing, and that comes from this little guy right here, that is our plus or minus side deal. The other way to do it is while you're still drawing. So let me do that again. Let me click over here and we'll click and drag. And while I'm still dragging it, I can get my arrow keys down or up to make more sides or less sides. And once you get what you want, then let go of the mouse and there's your shape with the chosen amount of sides you wish. All right, so there's two different ways to approach it. If you're like, man, I really want to have more, you can click on this and you can hover over the little anchor that is the change of sides and you can adjust it still. Okay, or you can adjust it with up and down arrows on your keyboard while you're drawing it. The same thing works great with stars. So let's check out a star here. Here's our basic five point star. All right. I have not let go of the mouse clicker and I can go. That's it. Set it for me. Let's do this again. Let me do one more. It set it for me after too long. So I can go with arrow keys. I can hold the arrow key and keep going, 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 going. That's ridiculous, right? Or I can hold the arrow keys and go backwards. My five point star. Nice. All right. It too has a little more sides or fewer points. So I could add more points here or fewer ones again. So even once you've drawn an object, you still have ways in which you can manipulate the shape. Um, by adding sides or points to some different things. Yesterday, we talked about how when we drew a, a square or a circle, when we hold down the shift key, we'll constrain it into a nice, equal, four-sided square or a perfectly uh, constrained circle when you hold down the shift key. So those are just some flashbacks and a, and a few new tidbits from today. One other thing I'd like to show you, I'm going to change the color of this green here momentarily. Let's turn it into something bright yellow. Okay, so I have this object here, this wonderful square. I'm going to use my selection tool and I'd like to make more of these squares. Let me show you a shortcut. I could make more of these squares by trying to draw them accurately over and over and over again, but there's a quick way to kind of create a copy. I'm going to hold down my Alt key, the object, and drag it. That Alt click, drag, Alt click, drag. And I can make numerable amounts of these. I could even, wait for it, select these two together. Drag, and now I've made two more of those objects. So it's a great way to quickly draw and reproduce different copies of things that you've made. All right. In the next section, we'll start talking about selecting tools, how to select them, and about some of our selection tools up here. Go ahead and go to File, Save for this session. This is going to save what we already have, uh, and it will add to what we've already named our file. So by hitting Save, it is saving this particular document, which you already have a name for, and that is already into your Google Drive because we've saved it there. So it is now saved and ready to go for Phase 3.